Grace and peace unto you, my friends, and welcome to Bishop Littman Live. In today's episode, we are sharing in the National Day of Prayer. It is a day that has been set aside, not just for us locally, but all over our nation. And I would even imagine all across the world in a time that we're living in like this, that we turn our hearts back toward God. In this time of national epidemic, in this time of economic darn downturn, in this time of sickness and illness and worldwide epidemic, if there was ever a time that we needed to pray, now is most assuredly that time. I'm reminded of 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, which is the story of Jehoshaphat and the people of God as they were being attacked by three enemies all at the same time. And they turned their eyes toward God. And we read in 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse 5, Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and we'll cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. Verse number 10, but now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. So they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. And I love this last part. But our eyes are upon you. Jehoshaphat in a national hostile situation being faced by three different enemies attacking from three different angles all at the same time, cries out to God and calls for a national prayer. And in this national prayer, as the people of God are praying, they remember what God had done for their ancestors. They remind God of how he had brought them through. And they name the three enemies that they are facing. Ladies and gentlemen, on this national day of prayer, let us remind ourselves of what God has done for and through our ancestors. But let us also recognize every enemy that is attacking us from every side. Right now, we're dealing with an enemy called COVID-19 that is attacking us from every angle and every side. Right now, we're dealing with an enemy of racism that a young man in South Georgia was not able to complete a jog through his neighborhood without having to be shot down in innocence by oppressive-minded people. That's an enemy that we're facing. Maybe the enemy is not knowing how you're going to survive. Will you have a job? Will you have health care? Will you have a job to go back to? How will you feed your children? That is an enemy that you might be facing. But Jehoshaphat 
And the children of Israel teach us that even when you're dealing with three or more enemies, the thing to do is to turn our hearts toward God and keep our eyes on God. We have to remember what God has done for our ancestors. We have to recall and even name our enemies. We have to turn our hearts toward God. But we also have to keep our eyes on God. Jehoshaphat was honest as a national leader. And our world would be much better if we had national leaders who would admit we don't know what to do. And then direct the hearts and the eyes and the attention of the people back to the God who made this world. For you see, the God who made this world is the only one that can mend this world. And I don't know what your specific needs are today, but maybe you don't know what to do. Turn your heart towards God. Be honest with him and say, God, I don't know what to do, but I'm keeping my eyes on you. Prayer is nothing more than keeping our eyes on God. But through prayer, we say we are helpless, but we are not hopeless. Through prayer, we say we may be defenseless, or so it seems. We may be divided, so it seems. But we are not in despair. We are not in dismay. And we, were, we are not without our daddy, Abba Father. Is how Jesus taught us to pray. It's the first syllables on the lips of a baby. Abba, Baba, Dada. And when we pray, we must come before him believing that our Heavenly Father loves us, cares about us, and even while we're going through what we're going through, it's not because he's angry with us, but yet he is carrying us through a larger test. You see, when I was in school, in the first week of the class, we would have a quiz, a pop quiz on the second week. But by week four, we had a test, a full test that would determine how much we had listened and how much we had taken in in the weeks leading up to the test. In the middle of the class, you're familiar with this term, a midterm exam. The exam was not to examine the teacher's ability to teach in as much as it was the student's ability to learn, retain, recall, and apply what had been learned. This is just a test that God is silent right now, yet he is seeking to know how much to examine how well we have listened while he was speaking to see how well we can recall the words that he has spoken unto us. That's why Jehoshaphat called the people to prayer, a national day of prayer that they may remember what God had done for their ancestors that they may call out the name of their enemies before God that they may come to the recognition that we don't know what to do and finally come to the declaration our eyes are upon you and as we pray today I want you to put your eyes on God and keep them there. Not on the president, not on other world leaders, not on Dr. Fauci, not on the COVID-19 team, but on God. Let's pray. Father, we stretch our hands to thee, no other help we know, 
If thou withdraw thyself from us, O whither shall we go? God, we come repenting in dust and ashes before thee today. As bad children before a good daddy. God, we don't know what to do. We thank you for the faith that Jehoshaphat shares with us today through 2 Chronicles 20. And we remember, O oh God, that you brought our ancestors through worse than this. God, when they, did, when they didn't have money, didn't have economy, when, when the crops wouldn't grow, you brought them through that. And Father, we recognize every enemy that we face. We remember what you've done for our ancestors, but we recognize every enemy that we face, every challenge, this virus that is wreaking havoc worldwide, Lord, that has caused so many lives to be lost. Father, we fully and, tr and, and truthfully submit our cares before you. God, this rabid demon of racism that has caused the death of yet another strong, black, beautiful young man. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would slay that demon of racism. God, we pray today for that enemy of impoverishment, that enemy of unemployment, that enemy of doubt, of dismay, of fear that so many are facing now in this world. God, as you brought our ancestors through, now bring us through this. Our eyes are on you. You are the source of our strength. You are the strength of our life. We lift our hands in total praise to you. And even though we don't know what to do, we can thank you right now because you know what to do. And our eyes are upon you. Now, God, I pray healing for our world, for world leaders, for world relationships, God, get in the midst of the United States and China. Father, let there be peace. Touch world leaders and national leaders and local governmental leaders and state leaders, Father, and city councilmen and mayors, and, 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 and do something in our hearts that will bring us back to you. God, we hear you speaking loudly but let your message get out. Help us to admit that we don't know what to do so that we can turn our eyes to you. Bless those who have been affected by this virus and bring healing, Father. Protect those doctors and nurses and medical staff that are on the front line. Thank you for the gift of the medical teams. Now, God, give clarity of understanding. And as you did for Jehoshaphat and the people of God, that as they prayed, you caused the word to rise up. They gave direction and instruction for what the people were to do. You gave them victory when they came together for the national day of prayer. And as you did it for Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel. So, Lord, do it now for us. Give us strategy, give us understanding, give us peace of mind, give us what we need to know in order to have victory over this time and over all of these enemies that continue to onslaught the people of God. And Father, we repent as a nation. Forgive our president for his ways that are not like yours. Forgive us, O oh God, for our ways that are not like yours. Hold back your wrath. Lord, you said in this same book of 2 Chronicles, in chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then 
will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And so God, I stand on behalf of our nation, beseeching your presence, your touch, and your power, your grace and your mercy, and bring all enemies to a full and complete defeat. And I thank you for peace in our world, peace in our nation, peace in the hood. Thank you for strengthening relationships across ethnic lines. Thank you, Father, for you're good, you're great. And we put it all in your hands this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Family, I want to continue to pray for you. If you have a prayer need or concern and would like to, it to be kept in strict of, strictest of confidence, please consider me as your prayer warrior. You can send me an email to prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. I love you. God has greater in store for you. Continue to pray as you do every day, but especially today, as we join together in this national day of prayer. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you is my prayer. This is Bishop A. Reginald Littman. Join me next time for Bishop Littman Live. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today.